Here is the data for the most recent experiment with capacitors. The goal was to charge up a capacitor and discharge a capacitor. Um, this is a repeat of something we had done before, but we have a new twist on this. So we're simultaneously recording the current. We have an ammeter or a current meter in series with the resistor and capacitor, and we are also recording the voltage across the capacitor. Um, one thing you can see, hopefully, is that there are current spikes that occur only when the capacitor is changing its voltage. So as the voltage on the capacitor climbs, the current will spike up and then level off. And what lines up is the current is zero when the voltage is not changing across the capacitor. So the current is only flowing in this circuit when the voltage is changing across the capacitor. When the capacitor is at zero volts, there is no current flowing. When the capacitor is at the maximum voltage, in this case five volts because our voltage supply is five volts, then the current is also zero. The new twist on this as well is looking at a process called the integral. This is a calculus process uh, that can calculate the area beneath a curve or in between a graph of a function and the horizontal axis. Um, Logger Pro gives us a button that just calculates the area for us. Uh, you'll find out in your calculus class how to actually do this process uh, from first principles in mathematics. But with Logger Pro, we can still use this result in this process for practical purposes. So when we calculate the integral of the current versus time graph, and specifically in this region indicated by the square brackets, um, we get a value that is a number, and the units are amps times seconds. So anytime we calculate the area of a curve um, on a graph, the units or the dimensions that it carries, whatever the vertical axis is, multiplied by whatever the horizontal axis is. It's kind of like doing a height times width or any kind of, it's, it's taking a quantity and putting it into new dimensions. Um, similarly, if you have a graph that looks like if this is meters and this is second and you have some kind of constant speed going on, the slope is rise over run and in this case it would be meters over seconds or meters per seconds. So when you find the slope of a curve or some drawing on a graph, the units that that slope has is the vertical axis divided by the horizontal axis. So when we do a slope, it's a division. And when we do an integral or an area, it's going to be a multiplication. So let's, let's deconstruct this amps times seconds. We know from earlier that the definition of current is a change in charge over some time interval. So the amp itself can be defined by a coulomb per second. And I'm using my convention of putting square brackets around the units so that this C is a coulomb, whereas this C is capacitance. And now we're running out of capital C's to use, but this is just something we have to live with for the symbolism that's been developed for capacitors and charge and electronics. So if I look at using the definition of what an ampere is, then an amp times a second is just going to give us a coulomb. Another way we consider this is if current is change in charge over a time interval, those are the triangles for Greek letter delta representing change, then current times a time interval 
is going to be some change in charge. So what this area beneath the current versus time graph represents is the total amount of charge that is accumulated on either side of the capacitor. Now remember, capacitors don't store charge, they separate charge. Whatever is the positive charge on one side is balanced out by the negative charge on the other side. Um, we can compare this to another value that we can calculate based on the circuit components. So if we consider the resistance of the circuit, which is probably something, it was 10 ohms, the capacitor in this data set happened to be 4,700 microfarads. It was one of the big capacitors that we had used, but not the biggest one. Um, the definition of capacitance is a ratio. And it comes from the Q equals CV, or we can rewrite it as Q or C equals Q divided by V, or capacitance of a capacitor is equal to the charge that the capacitor can separate at a particular voltage. And the units of capacitance are farads are equal to coulombs per volts. So this again is coulombs. Here we have voltage and this is the farad. So we can make a comparison. We know that the charge accumulated across this capacitor at 5 volts um, is 0 0.02574, not amp time seconds, but coulombs. So that's the charge we have accumulated across this capacitor as measured by the probe wear and integrated by Logger Pro. Let's consider then the capacitance and the voltage. So the charge that I can expect to separate with this particular capacitor, C times V, 4700 microfarads times 5 volts. I can't multiply this explicitly yet. I have to replace the micro here with 10 to the minus 6. So what I now have is 4700 times 10 to the minus 6 farads times 5 volts. I can even rewrite this as 4.7 times 10 to the negative third farads, just moving this decimal place over a few more times, times 5 volts. I'm going to let OneNote do a little calculation for me. So I can take 4.7 times 5 equals, and I know this is going to be times 10 to the minus third. Actually, I can even just let OneNote do all of this for me. I can go 0 0.0047 times 5 equals 0 0.0235. So what I'm expecting is that this is 0 0.0235 coulombs that we can accumulate across this capacitor. This is pretty close to this value of 0 0.02574. Again, this is this value right here as well. Close, not exact, but again, the capacitor that I have might not be exactly 4,700 microfarads. That's one possibility. Um, the probe wear may not be zeroed properly. Um, any host of reasons. Uh, let's not use the phrase human error for this. 
but we can think of a huge laundry list of possibilities why this isn't going to exactly match up but for for a quick calculation and a quick data set this is pretty close